Can you tell me anything true? Did anything... I, that's not even the name you told me. Jacob, I am so sorry. But I was a single mother and I had a child and he left. Fuck you. He left Fuck us. Fuck you. What do you want me to do? He left us. I'm so sorry, Jacob. Hey, Jessica, how are you? Great, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you for joining me. I'm so how happy to be here. Oh, well, I, I love, love getting to uh, meet people and it's been a very amazing journey so far. So, welcome. Thanks. You started off in theater. That's correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. What age did you start? Well, not what age, because we don't give out our age, but like, when did you start? <laughs> yeah, very good. Um, so I actually started acting when I was 12. Um, a friend of mine, I'm from a very small town in northern Minnesota, and a friend of mine uh, said, the community college is doing a Midsummer Night's Dream, and they need um, kids to play the fairy chorus. Will you audition oh. me? And I said, sure. <laughs> And so I got in and it was like such an amazing experience to be starting adolescence, feeling so awkward, not having a place in school. And then there was this world of adults who were just playing and everyone was accepted and everybody was taken in. And I was like, this is, this is where I belong. And so I knew that I wanted to study theater, you know, since then. And so I, I have an undergraduate degree in theater and then I went to the Peace Corps in Morocco and I came back and I thought, oh, do I, is this what I want to do? What do I want to do? So I went away from it for a while. And then um, when I moved to San Francisco about 10 years ago, I said, you know, no, I'm an actor. I'm going to pursue this. So I've been, I was doing theater for about eight years and then I moved to LA to transition to film and TV. Yeah, those, those that we take, those are uh, often necessary when we have to pull back from something to make sure we're on the right track. That's right. Because sometimes they're a godsend. <laughs> yeah, because you appreciate it more, right? Exactly. You have a, a greater sense of the certainty around it. Exactly, exactly. So now you're transitioning into film and television and commercials. So what have you found are... New, like new and big differences to you with between theater and now a camera in your face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm a very physical actress. I, I'm a yoga teacher, which we'll talk about. And so, like, I'm in my body. Like, I'm dancing. I'm moving. I'm shaking all day. Like, I can't. I'm. I. I have to be using my body. Um, I haven't yet found the way to be that actress on camera. And it could be the things that I'm doing, you know, like, especially the Zoom box acting, you really can't use your body in that way. Um, so I'm finding that is hard. And I'm also learning that I learn lines through the physicalization. Okay. So I've never had trouble memorizing lines, but sometimes I'll get this copy or I'll get these two page sides and I'm like, why? This should be easy. Why is this not sticking in? Um, and I think it's because I haven't yet integrated like how I can use my body for film, if that makes sense. It, it makes absolute sense of uh, the physicality. Is, yeah, you, you've got like, you know, this finite space and you're like, how do I maneuver this? To, like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a whole different learning ball game. <laughs> yeah. It is. And then I think the other thing that I am learning about myself is like, I have a whole emotional life happening inside all the time. In fact, like I'm overwhelmed by my emotions 90% of the time. Um, but for whatever reason, and I think it's because on stage, I use my body to show it. It's not always being conveyed on my face. And so sometimes I'll watch these takes and I'll be like, I'm literally just staring blankly into space when that's not what's happening inside. So I have, a, I have to really think about the way to like activate it so that you're getting that experience through the eyes, through the face. Right. You know, uh, I'm just having to learn how to place it in my body differently. Yeah, that's, that, uh, 
I, w- I was told that I needed to have more fun. Hmm. I, w- I was apparently taking, I was too serious about things. <laughs> you know, I had a, a real issue with RBF, but that's not like me as a person. It's just, I just, <laughs> so having to try and get myself out of that and, and bring my emotions from, from here down. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> was a very difficult thing to do. Yeah. Um, so out of, okay, so we'll start with your films that you have done. Yeah. Um, are any of them on the film festival circuit? Uh huh. Yeah. So I, uh, about maybe it was like eight years ago, I was asked to do a short film in San Francisco and uh, it was a horror. And that one went through the festival circuit then, and it was it was great. I had a great experience, and this that was the first time I was on set and was like, oh, I, I like this. You know, this is something I think I could do. And that is it's no longer in the festival circuit, but you can find that one on my website. It's called This Little Light. Okay. Um, and then in San Francisco, I did a bunch of just student films and little things here and there. But then two years ago, almost I was. Uh, cast in a feature down here called 86 Melrose Avenue and that one is now in the festival circuit it looks like we're basically in a festival every week or every other week through the fall so I got to see it for the first time at the Oakland International Film Festival virtually uh, last week they was it premiered at a festival on Saturday and then there's a couple more coming up yeah so that's exciting Yeah, 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 that feels great. And then um, I have a bunch of stuff in development that I'm working on to start producing myself and collaborating with friends. So hopefully that'll be soon. I was going to ask you, have you finally jumped into the uh, create your own content realm of things? (laughs) Yeah, I was so resistant to it for so long because I think it (laughs) for me, it was like do a one woman show. And I was like, I don't. I don't have a story that I want to tell. Like, that's not, that's not where I am. And I was, I, I don't have a writer's brain. I, people hate when I say this, but like I could improvise anything that you wanted to improvise. And if you wanted to capture that, I would be very happy. But there is something that happens when I have to sit down and put pen to paper. Like all my spontaneity, all my creativity, all my uniqueness feels like it just like goes out the window. So I was really hesitant for a long time. And then I, a friend of mine from San Francisco started organizing these play readings once quarantine started. And so I would show up weekly or twice a week and it was like my lifeline. And through that, I've met a bunch of people who actually were in San Francisco and have moved to LA. Some I knew, some I didn't. And we gather and we make things. And a lot of it is improvised. We did a music video on oh. Saturday, which is like a like a comedy music video. So there have been things that have been coming out of that that's really helped me move into the driver's seat a little bit more. Like right, what I'm realizing time. is yeah, and I think what I'm realizing is like maybe I have a producer's mind. Like not capital B producer, like I'm not a money person. I'm not that person, but like I you love putting people together. I love casting. I love like figuring out the logistics of things. So right. uh, that's been really, really fun. And then, um, you know, when you get to collaborate with your friends, the like beauty of the stuff that comes out because you have that trust and that intimacy is really great. So there's some there's some stuff coming down the pipeline. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, nothing really beats collaboration and creation. It. I um. I don't know why I'm like a solo worker. Like I'll sit there and just write and write and write and write and write. And then I'll get annoyed that I'm writing so much because I'm not, I don't like to write. I write Mm. because I can and I know it's helpful even with self-care purposes. Mm. And I do come up with ideas and I'm like, really? Like, can I, no, (laughs) but but yeah, I get it. Um, I think uh, writing is, um, It's a skill everyone has. Creative writing, yes, but I think that comes along with keeping that inner child and not losing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So you said you were a yoga teacher. 
That's right. I am. Mm-hmm. I love yoga. And oh, wait, wait, I did mess up. So, um, I forgot to go back and talk about your favorite production on uh, theater in theater. Oh, oh my gosh, there's so many. I love theater. And I love language so much. And I love the language of place. Um, I saw you were an ESL teacher too. I was, yeah, that was my job when I was a Peace Corps volunteer and it sort of became my like bread and butter, like paid gig until I started getting enough auditions and things where I couldn't commit to the time of teaching. But that was a new skill to add to your skill box on the resume. That's right. And you were being helpful. I mean, it's a win-win. It's a win-win. Yeah, absolutely. And actually learning a language, in my opinion, is the same as actor training. It's like listening and responding. How do you want them to feel? What are you trying to communicate? What are you trying to receive? You know, so a lot of it is, I brought a lot of theater games into um, ESL work. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think anybody realizes that what we're doing right now is exactly what they want us to do in an audition. <laughs> no. We overthink it and make it worse than it is. I know. I had an audition today where they were literally like, um, just tell me about a movie you just watched. I was like, okay, let's just talk about it. And that was the whole audition. And you go, okay, all right. Bye. That felt right. weird. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. So back to your theater production, your favorite one that you've enjoyed so far performing in. Well, I think probably two. One was, um, so my favorite play of all time is Angels in America, okay. um, part one, Millennium Approaches. And so that was sort of the tipping point about whether or not I was going to pursue acting. And I was living in Tucson and they were doing a production and I said, if I book the part, if I book Harper Pitt, my dream role, then I'm going to pursue this for a while. And I did. And it was great. And the play is so beautiful. And I loved playing Harper. I want to play Harper forever. <laughs> um, but then when I was in San Francisco, this new immersive theater piece came out called The Speakeasy. And they employed like 50 actors in the Bay Area to develop and create this in interactive um type of immersive theater, which, you know, is sort of this new kind of theater that's really cropping up. Um, and I got to originate my role and I got to help in the development. And I had, in my opinion, others might argue the best character of the whole piece. Like she was this wild former suffragette, teacher by day, drunk by night, ex-flapper who would just like walk in a room, create chaos and leave. Wow. And, um, you know, at the end of the night, I, I got to like go up onto the cabaret stage and like kick off all the chorus girls and just take over. And um, bad mamma jamma. Yeah, it was amazing. <laughs> and I did that for over a year. I performed over a hundred times. Wow. And, you know, in the Bay Area, they don't have extended runs like New York and LA. So to be able to do that kind of, to have that kind of contract as an actor in the, in the Bay Area is unheard of. And then to do immersive theater, I feel like you could throw anything at me as an actor now and I could handle it. Like it made me such a better actor. And then I, through that projection, I also realized how much I love development of oh. new pieces. Oh, good. Yeah. As long as you remain open to learning, you'll discover all kinds of things about yourself. Yeah, that's right. That's Pretty right. awesome. Yeah. So now back to the yoga. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been a yoga teacher for too? So I've been a yoga teacher for uh, officially, like through my teacher training for two years, but I've been teaching on and off for about 10 years, just with friends and at the ESL school, like beginners who wanted to learn. Um, I've been practicing yoga for about 18 years on my own. And uh, it's like my favorite thing to do. So what dancing? Yeah, I, I like dancing. I actually had a uh, ballet scholarship when I was little from oh, wow. theater, from doing musical theater. That's where I got it from. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> so um, now what benefits do you think yoga will bring to artists and well, everyday people, but specifically for this series, actors artists. and artists alike? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think in general, it just keeps our body young, you know, it keeps our body limber and it prevents injuries. So as actors, of course, we benefit from that. As humans, we benefit from that. And 
one of the things that made me want to be a teacher is like, I look at my dad and he's so strong. He's like one of the strongest, fittest men I know, like for being his age, he has no fat on his body. He's still got muscles. He, he can move, but he can't touch his toes. Mm. And so I worry about his joints. And I think to myself, you are not the person who needs to have a joint issue because you you're so active. And so I think what yoga can do for us is it, it, yeah, it literally keeps the body young, I think. Mm. Um, and so for actors, there's a lot of benefits. You know, I had a teacher once talk about this concept of readiness that like our bodies as actors need to look like they can, they're ready to do anything on stage because we're living in a hyper-realized world, right? Or even when we look at movies, you know, the amount of control that your body needs to have for certain things or like action sequences or dance sequences, like our job is to bring all the elements of life to life, you know, for the screen or the stage. And so just having tone and fitness and flexibility and balance can do that. Okay. But then I also think breath, you know, being in our bodies and being connected to our breath is so important. Um, I think it calms the mind and it calms the anxiety around this profession that some of us have chosen, some of us can't get away <laughs> from, that does so much damage to oh. our self-esteem because of the amount of no's and the competition and like yoga takes all of that away if you really sit into the mental practice as well and then this part might feel a little bit woo woo but I do believe in it um, <laughs> so there's like the chakra science and oh. I, you know chakras have this bad rap I think is being sort of this like kind of woo woo thing but it, there is a science to it I mean acupuncture is using the same energy cycles a lot of um uh, Eastern medicine or like homeopathic and alternative medicine practices use it as well. And it's just about flow of energy in the body. And I was doing a chakra workshop one time and I was like, this is the same thing as Alexander technique. Right. We're just trying to open the spine so that there's a flow of energy. So there's not a block, you know, actors all the time talk about like not being able to cry on command. And I would argue that might be because like some of your chakras, some of your energy isn't flowing through your body to access that vulnerability. And that comes from stress and tension and holding emotional experiences. There's a book out there. It was written about doctors, but I think it applies to actors as well called The Body Keeps the Score. It came out of Stanford. And it was talking about how like ER doctors in particular, because of the amount of trauma they experience from others in their daily lives, were like having high rates of suicide, depression, high burnout rates. And they were finding like all of these physical maladies. Mm -hmm. And it's no secret. I mean, when you take on a part, when you fully take on a part, you are embodying the life experience of someone. And of course, because it's interesting, there's trauma, there's emotional baggage, right. there's all of this stuff. And so I don't know how that doesn't live in our bodies as actors. And we don't, it's not like we slough it off and we take on the next part. Yeah. So I think yoga can help us with that as well. Okay. That does actually make a lot of sense, actually, because I, I mean, uh, there's, there's stress induced illnesses out there. So if your body's holding it, <laughs> you're going to feel it. You're going to know it. It's going to make you, yeah. I, I, um, know that uh high blood pressure that's mm -hmm. holding in stress arteries giving you i mean yeah so yeah it's it's it makes a lot of sense <laughs> so are there any words for anyone that you would like to share uh whether it's to motivate others whether it's to inspire actors to well beginning actors or just actors in general to move forward or just for everybody to, of love yeah. <laughs> yeah I think a phrase um so I have a I take class with a, a woman named Carol um DeAndrea here and she she was in the original cast of West Side Story on Broadway and she's in the movie so she's like long time theater actress has worked with LA actors forever, loves actors, loves creating community. 
And she said last week in class, and it's really stuck with me all week, is that the, the quote was, and I don't remember who she was quoting, so I'm going to attribute it to Carol. Um, to go far, you have to start where you are. And I think this is a good quote for acting, for life, and for yoga. Because I think sometimes there's this sense of like rushing, like I got to get to this certain point. By this age, I need to have booked this thing. I need to have my union card in order to do this. I think there's always a sense of um, uh, unrest mm -hmm. the actor, right? Within our careers, especially in the film and TV industry because, and now that we have social media. Mm -hmm. And so I think just remembering that we all come to this career and this position from a different place. I mean, some people's parents are Hollywood actors and some people know somebody who's a producer and other people like me grew up in a really small town and they found their way to LA and don't really know anybody in the industry and they're just relying on their talent and their hard work. And, you know, we're all coming at it from a different perspective. Um, and so I think just having that patience and remembering that, that it's a, a calling being an artist is a calling, and if you're if you really listen to your heart, I think it'll it'll guide you in the path that you, you want to go. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Hey, yogis, artists, and friends, uh, welcome. We are going to do a three-minute sequence of. Uh, poses that will just help us have a little motivation and maybe help us mitigate some anxiety. Let's start in a seated position. You can have your legs crossed or one leg in front if that feels better. And let's place the palms facing up on our laps. Close your eyes, bring the shoulder blades to touch or in that direction of touch with the chest. Take a big deep breath in. Open mouth, let it go. Inhale, open mouth, let it go. One more inhale, open mouth, let it go. Now seal the lips. You want to keep that same sense of expansiveness in the belly, breathing in and out through the nose. Really feeling the belly get big. The chest expand and then release through the nose. And as we sit here, take a scan of your body. Where are you holding tightness, tension, stickiness? Take a scan of your heart and your mind. See what comes up. No judgment, just conscious observers. Breathing into those areas. Take one more big deep breath in. Exhale through the nose. Under the eyes open. Let's begin. We're going to start in tabletop position today. So in tabletop, we want the shoulders over the wrists. We want the wrists shoulder distance, feet hips distance. Push into the tops of the uh, your feet into the mat. Inhale, we'll bring the collarbones to the sky for cow pose. Exhale, chin to chest for cat. Inhale, cow pose. Exhale, cat. One more inhale. Exhale, chin to chest. Back to a neutral spine. Let's take some circles with the hips. Maybe the booty grazes the heels. Clockwise and counterclockwise. Just trying to release the lower back of the sacrum. Maybe you take a figure eight. That feels good. Ever feels good on the body. Nice. Come back to neutral. And let's take our hands out a step in front of us. We're going to sink the booty back just like 10%. So we get this release in the lower back. The lower body is arching. We're putting the weight into the fingertips, falling into the mat. Drop the chin to the chest and draw an arc from shoulder to shoulder with your chin, releasing your neck. 
And if you feel a prop or a sticky spot, go ahead and work it out. A couple more rounds. For three. Two. And one. From here, bring the hips back over up the knees. Arms are going to go long in front of us and the forehead comes down on the neck. Take a deep breath in, flutter your lips, exhale. Two more like that, inhale. Flutter the lips, exhale. One more. Now from here, keep your hands where you are, pull yourselves onto your bellies. We're gonna bring the elbows so that they're under the shoulders, squeezing the elbows in, flying into the mat. Pushing into the tops of the feet, lifting the crown of the head to the sky for Sphinx pose. Older blades kiss hard as you can. We'll stay here for five, four, three, two, one. Great, now take the elbows wide. Hands come on top of one another, forehead comes down, bend the knees, windshield wiper side to side. Maybe you take some circles with the knees, circles with the feet, if that feels good, point and flex. And just releasing the lower back, the hamstrings and the glutes here. So whatever feels good to you. Great. Come back to neutral. Feet come down. We're gonna take the arms out in front of us again. Shoulders over the elbows. Ease the elbows in. Push tops of the feet into the ground and make the knees lift. Crown of the head to the sky, sphinx pose. Breathing here to the bottom of the belly. When we feel anxious, putting pressure on the belly, putting pressure on the solar plexus, space beneath the sternum, really help calm the nervous system. One more deep breath in. Exhale, release one more time. Elbows go wide. Hands come on top of one another, forehead down, and we windshield like this. More deep breath in. Release the feet. Tuck your toes. Bring your hands in alignment with your armpits. Squeeze the elbows in. Push up into plank. Just a moment. Please. We'll be here for three, two, one. Good. Come back into tabletop. Knees go as wide as the mat. Sink the hips back. Child pose. Arms come forward. Stay here and breathe. Open mouth, exhale. Inhale. Open mouth, exhale. Two more, inhale. Open mouth, exhale. Work yourself back up to the tabletop. We're gonna um, bring the knees around to the long edge of the mat. We're just gonna bring everything on 90 degrees. And we're going to take the right foot in, so it's on an angle. Sit back on our hip, on our hip, on our heel. The left foot comes forward, toes face forward, knee to the sky. Good. You feel like you need a little more space. It's okay to walk the foot out the step. The tendency is for the knee to do this. What we want is for that knee and that ankle to stay together. Hands come together in prayer in front of the chest. Seated goddess pose. I love this pose because you're like ready to move at a moment's notice. Okay. I also like this one because it's like our Broadway pose. So we're going to take the left fingertips to the ground and we're going to push open on the knee with our elbow. And then the right fingertips come to the sky. We're going to look up at our right hand and we're going to go ta da. If you want to wiggle your fingers, you can. But we're feeling one line of energy from the fingertips. Breathing down to the bottom of the belly for three, two, one. Great. Hands come together, prayer in front of the chest. Let's switch sides. Hands come down, left foot comes in, right foot comes forward. Again, find a comfortable seat so you feel the knees playing. Go ahead and walk it out. Hands come together in prayer. Pushing that elbow into the knee, 
right fingertips come down to the ground. Left fingertips to the sky. Ta-da! Looking over towards the left fingertips, one line of energy. Breathing here for three, two, one. Beautiful. Hands come together. Last pose of the day, we're going to come down to our seat. We're going to bring the soles of the feet together. We're going to just walk the heels in as close to the groin as possible. Let's start by giving our feet, our ankles, and our calves a little massage, just generating some flow and some circulation. Okay, now let's take the thumbs and put them in the soles of the feet. We have a pressure point here. Then we're going to open the top of the feet like a book, and as we do that, the elbows go in into the scalp. Crown lifts. Shoulder blades kiss. Beautiful. Suck your navel in, engage the core, and come forward leaning with the chest. Nice. Find your edge, then release the head. Butterfly pose. Deep breathe. Deep breathe. Big hip. Here. Five. Four. Three. Six. And now come back up slowly. Take the legs in front of us and just shake them out a minute. Come back in. You can either cross your legs or have your legs in front. Just find a comfortable seat. Palms face up. Close your eyes. Crown of the head lifts to the spine. Just taking one more moment to be here with the breath. Feeling the belly expand. Chest rise. Hand of your head and your heart and your body. Have a moment of gratitude for practice, for togetherness, for community. Hands come together in prayer in front of the chest, Andre Lee. The light in me honors the light in you. Out of the eyes open. I teach yoga classes for artists and friends and family uh, Thursday mornings, 9 a.m. California time. Please join me. Uh, information will be on my social media. How was that? Was that okay? That was awesome. Thank you Great. so, so very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. And, and dear friends, Get your yoga on and get popping. <laughs>